Hi! You are very, very welcome to Keys to the Kingdom. I started doing this broadcast after a thought hit me um, when Jesus told Peter that I have given you the keys to the kingdom. So there are two kingdoms. Like I said uh, last week, there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of freedom and the kingdom of oppression. And you can live this life looking normal, but living in two separate kingdoms. A kingdom where there is victory, a kingdom where there is defeat. It's possible for you to live in two kingdoms. Now, um, because of the fallen nature of man, we actually were born in bondage because of sin. We were born living in the kingdom of darkness, of defeat, of oppression, of everything not good. <laughs> not good, right? But then when Jesus came and um, he offered us a totally different life, an alternative life. He offered us a life in the kingdom of God. Now, just imagine that the two kingdoms have got big gates or big doors and you need a key to get in. Now, there are keys that get you into the kingdom of God. Of course, first of all, it's Christ Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Without him, you can't experience the kingdom of God. But when you get into the kingdom of God, Apostle Mose wrote a, a book uh, called Commotion at the Gates. Um, salvation is not just about saying yes to Jesus and you die. Salvation is about going past the gate into the mansions and all the goodies that God has in there for us. All right. So when you get to your mansion, for example, it's beautiful, it's been set up for you. Imagine it's got beautiful lights, it's, it's all stocked up with food and, and comfortable beds and, and all manner of entertainment that you need. And I don't know what else that you love, okay? Um, jacuzzi, um, sauna, you know, the works, okay? But if you have no key to get into your mansion, <laughs> life sucks, right? And you could be at the window, you know, like when you peep through the window and you can see all the good stuff in there but you can't access it because you have no key and so jesus gives us keys to the kingdom and that's really what this program is about because you know what friends i i i have lived two lives even as a believer in christ i've lived a life where um, I'm suffering. I am stuck. I am not experiencing freedom or victory in different areas, sickness, disease, provision, whatever. Um, sometimes not even doing well in school. So I've experienced the worst of it all. And then I've experienced the best of it all, uh, being the top of the class, having abundance, being healed and living in a supernatural health ETC. And, and I can tell you for sure that, that whereas sometimes you can land onto something, it's possible for you to succeed more intentionally, more intentionally than by accident. And it's when you have a key. Um, you left home, you probably locked the house when you're living, right? You probably locked your bedroom when you're living. And when you go back home, you're going to open the door and get in with certainty. And you can, you can already estimate what you're going to do. You open the door, you get in, there's your living room, there's your um, kitchen, um, there's the uh, bedroom, the bathrooms and everything. You can go with certainty from where you are back home or if you're in the house right now, you can actually go to these places with certainty because you've got the keys to the doors. And this is what we are talking about keys to the kingdom how can you live with certain fr freedom certain victory certain liberty certain not like a certain man but it's certain like for sure for sure okay so that's what we're talking about um so welcome to this conversation today um last uh, la last week we had lots of fun and uh this week and last week we were talking about uh, counsel, the key of, of seeking counsel. It's, it's a very powerful key. This week I would like us to have a conversation on, on how we think and the power of thinking. Um, as a man thinketh, so is he, right? I remember uh, watching a, a movie, Denzel Washington, and, and this is one of his bloodier type of movies. I, I, I love Denzel Washington as an actor. I think he's one of the best. 
Um, but but his, his, he, he acted this movie, in this movie, he was a main character in the movie Training Day. And, and Training Day he was acting as, as, as sort of like a, a well-trained military man who is trying to live a civilian life, but sort of keeps on coming out um, whenever he sees um, things that are being done that are unfair and he needs to bring justice into the system. And so um, he was a soft-spoken man and, and he would try to politely tell the criminals, you know, stop behaving badly. What you're doing is not good. He was very polite, very, very polite, okay? And, and then they would answer roughly or abuse him or things. And, and I remember this part of, of this scene where he turned, he, he locked the door, he locked himself in the room with all these criminals, and as he was locking, he said, manners maketh man. And when he turned around, he iced all the guys. He basically killed all the guys. You know, so, so he always said, manners maketh man. My little twist to that will be, thinking maketh man. As a man thinks, so is he. There's a scripture in Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 7, that says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And he was talking here about a miser. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Have you ever gone to a place where someone serves you a meal and when you eat it, he's like, he actually ate my food? Doesn't he have any shame? In, in the part of the world where I come from, Buganda, I'm from Buganda in Uganda, uh, and I was born and raised in Kampala. Um, so, so in my local dialect, when someone says Jangutulia, which means come join me for a meal, um, uh, the, the, the way you're supposed to respond is Kanzije, which means I'm on my way, I'll be there shortly, but the thing you are trained to do is keep walking away. You say Kanzije, but you don't come. You actually keep walking away because you are trained not to necessarily trust that someone who invites you to a meal is your friend or actually um, desires for you to have the meal because they should have invited you before they served. All right? So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, a miser may have a meal, and he wants you to, he says, come have a meal. But even if you're eating and drinking with him or with her, um, their intention is not for you to eat. Their intention is not for you to drink. Their intention is for them to keep all the food and eat it all. In Buganda, again, where I come from, there's a saying that says, um, which translated um, into English means um, when, when, when a poor person uh, gives you a chicken for a gift, you know, um, now I know in some parts of the world chicken is, is like the lowest grade or lowest end of food, um, meat that, that you would have. Um, in my part of the world, chicken is like the top, okay? So beef is common, chicken not so much, okay? Now, now when a poor man gives you chicken for a gift, they're always going to talk about it. That's what my local dialect says. It, it says, So every time they meet you, you know, so if, if they gave you chicken maybe two months ago or one year ago or five years ago, they meet you and they say, hey, do you remember that time when I gave you my black chicken? You know that the cock, the big black cock? Every time they meet you, in every place they meet you, it doesn't matter who you are with, you could be in an important meeting. When they greet you, they remind you about their black cock that they gave you that you ate five years ago at Christmas. Right? So the best thing to do with a man like that is don't take the chicken. Right? But, but why, is, why is he behaving like that? It's because that's how he's basically wired. That's how he thinks. As he thinks, so is he. You know, you, you may disagree initially with this um, key to the kingdom, but I'll tell you honestly that you're sitting in the chair where you're sitting because of how you think. You, you, you drank what you drank today because of how you think. You live where you live because of how you think. 
the kind of friends you have and attract are the ones you have because of how you think. In his book, uh, Straightforward Financial Growth, which is one of the best, I think really should be, the best personal finance book in the whole world. Like, absolutely, you should try it, read it. Um, it's all over, you can get it online and, and in so many bookstores, at least in our part of the world in Uganda. And if you're out of Uganda, it's online, okay? So you can buy the book, Straightforward Financial Growth by Apostle Mose. He writes saying that one day he goes to this North Star um, hotel and he wanted to swim. So he gets there, there's no one really there to serve him. Um, he's unattended to um, the bathrooms, uh, the washrooms where he, um, the, 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 the places to, to shower, the showers um, were dirty, um, the slippers were dirty, the towels were dirty. He gets into the pool and the water is dirty and he does a few laps and he's thinking to himself, why am I in a dingy hotel with very poor customer service, swimming in dirty, bluish, greenish water. It's because he was poor. He thought poor. He just, it's, it's where his mind took him. And he says that he decided from that point that he's going to sign divorce papers with poverty. He got out of that pool and went to a more expensive place and has never gone back to places like that again because he said it's enough. It was a paradigm shift. Like I am, I am swimming in dirty water because I think poor. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's a popular um, character in Uganda called Tamale Mirundi. Um, uh, He's a political commentator, um, trained as a journalist, seasoned journalist, and he, get into, he gets into politics and he's a spokesman for the ruling party. I don't know if he still is, but, um, you know, he's, he's a portable guy in, 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 in our part of the world. And, and he's got this saying, I'll say it in, in vernacular and I'll translate it. He says, Toli muavu, omtwego gwe muavu. You aren't poor, it's your mind, it's your thinking that is poor. And then he sometimes says, the problem is um, your long drum, like, like your head. The problem is your head. And, and, and really, there is a lot of truth in that. Many years ago, um, Joyce Myers, had a, um, who's an international uh, preacher of the gospel, had a, a bookshop in, in Kampala. And I remember going to scan her books, and there was this book that, that caught my mind, uh, caught my attention, and it was called but battlefield of the mind battlefield of the mind but as a young man i kind of look at it i say battlefield of the mind what there's no battle in the mind I was like nah no this is i need something more serious to read and having grown up uh, more than 20 years later i have got to realize that that is probably one of the most important books that joyce myers has written battlefield of the mind because there's actually a battle in your mind. How you think is exactly what you become. You are where you are because of how you think. You are going to be where you're going because of how you think. It's a battlefield of the mind. And um, I remember there's a friend, um, an acquaintance I bumped into in about 20, 2014. 2013 2014 that's about seven eight years ago um, we he excited us about you know farming um, chili and we we farmed cayenne and all that and he was coaching us and mentoring us he's called George and so one time we visit his home and and he's telling us a, a, he told us a very interesting story so so many of us um, at least in Uganda um, and in some parts in Africa not so much um, in the Western world. It's, it's a common thing here to have a domestic assistant, someone who helps you with your chores. Um, most middle-class families have a domestic assistant, all right? And so usually it's a young girl, about maybe 18, 19, 20, early 20s, um, who has come from the village. Um, the education didn't quite work well, and, and they decided to come, okay? Get some work. Um, save some money and probably carry on with their education or something like that, okay? So, so most of the time when people come from the village, 
they aren't used to the food that town people eat, right? So the village has got very nice organic food, you know, cassava, sweet potato, Irish potato, um, uh, plantain, um, etc., etc., right? Sweet bananas and the like. And, and, but when they come to, to the city, they, they then bump into processed food, okay? Which ideally is not so good for them, but it's exciting because it feels like it's the modern thing. So there's bread, all right? There is cake and things like that. So most of the time when you would get um, a new domestic assistant to help him, um, she would, um, you know, devour the bread like from the first slice to almost the last and have a few slices left for his kids to eat. So, so his way of training the new domestic assistant was that he would then buy five loaves of bread every day and no food. It was just bread, nothing else. So, so they would eat bread for breakfast, bread for lunch, bread for supper, bread for breakfast, bread for lunch, bread for supper until it go to a certain day where the girl says look i'm sorry sir is it possible for us to eat real food like i'm sick and tired of this so then he would uh, bring back ordinary food and he would bring a loaf of bread and she'd eat one or two slices and that's it because her mind has changed she's no longer too excited about the bread so it's actually possible to train the mind different and, and get it from thinking this way and it starts thinking that way. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. A friend of mine, um, S.P. Chinove, very interesting guy. Senior counsel, um, has been president of the Law Society in Uganda, um, a man who loves the Lord, very generous man, uh, but he, for the longest time, has always said, Sente which means money um, basically um, has its part in my home, or like money lives in my home. And, and no wonder he always has money. He's, he's not a broke guy, right? like by no fair standards at all. He's not. And it's because of how he thinks, right? So, so how do you know how a man thinks is you start hearing what they say. How do you know what a woman thinks like? They start, you, you hear what they say. It, there's very many very beautiful women like, you know, God created many beautiful, but not many feel beautiful. Sometimes the most beautiful of them speak like ugly people. And the fair looking ones, you can find a fair looking woman who's very confident in herself, confident in who God, uh, who she is in God. She knows God loves her. She's just confident. In, in the gifts that she's got, in her abilities, and, and they turn out beautiful. Why? It's because of how they think. It's because of how they think. So as he thinks in his heart, as a man or woman thinks in their heart, so is he or so is she. Apostle Mose, and I, I, you, you know, I refer a lot to him because he's discipled me for many years and I've learned so many things from him. He, he loves to tell um, this story from this scripture, Romans 12, 2. Um, um, because Romans 12, 2 says, um, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? Some of the translations say, do not be conformed to the standards of this world. So, so you know, the, 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 the way he puts it, which I really love, is that the conforming is to a pattern. It's to, it's to um, like, like, you know when you're, when you're making bricks and, and there is a mold, okay? So whatever shape the mold has, when you are getting the clay in or you're, go you're using concrete or whatever it is that you're using to make the brick, it's got to conform to the standard of the mold. If the mold is square, it will be square. If the mold is rectangular or cube, uh, uh, like a, um, a you know, cube or whatever, it will take the form of the mold. 
the brick never comes out looking any different from the mold, right? So, so um, children are born with yes in their hearts. They're always saying yes. All kids think possibilities. In fact, it is said that all kids are born geniuses and it's beaten out of them by the age of five. You know why? Because by the time they make two, in fact, we have terribly said that they are in the terrible two. All right? So parents then start using this word so many times. No! No! Don't do that! No! No! What are you doing? You're hitting them into a certain place and say it's not possible for you to have a lot of money. It's not possible for you to be too clever. It's not possible for you to win all the time. You can't always have your way. Who, who do you think you are? La 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 No, no, no. And so by the time a kid makes five, you've beaten dreaming out of them. You've beaten life out of them. You've beaten joy out of them. You've beaten possibility out of them. They are just like you. Failing. So, so this key to the kingdom of God is absolutely powerful. Andrew Womack um, in 2017 visited Uganda about June uh, 2017 or thereabouts. And um, he was preaching and he was talking about not limiting God. He visited Worship Harvest. We had the honor of, of having him visit. And, and he was preaching about not limiting God. And he was talking about this very thing, about how a man thinks in his heart. How you think shapes everything. In my life, I have had consistent predictable victory in areas where I have constructed my mind to think victoriously. And one of them is healing. I've, told, I've talked a lot about this. It's a gift that God has given me, a gift of healing, but it's also something about how I think. I think health. I think supernatural health. I think it's possible to be well. I actually think that symptoms of a sickness is the devil's suggestion. It's almost like he comes with a, with a form and he says, hey, I've got um, a whole line of sicknesses. Um, you could have a fever, you could have um, you know, a, a, a flu, you could have itchy skin and all that. And when you put this combination together, it's a cough. When you put that combination together, it's malaria. If you put this combination together, that's um, COVID. If you put that combination together, you know, so, so then when the symptoms come, it's like he's brought this questionnaire and he wants you to tick yes to the ones you accept. So he starts saying, I feel like I have a, I feel like I have a, I feel like I have a. Do you know what happens? You are checking the list and then at the end he says, okay, so demons, what's the score? Malaria. Okay, give that one malaria. What's the score? COVID. Okay, give that one COVID. What's the score? Cancer. Okay, give that one cancer. Because you have actually ticked the box. But if you say you're not sick, like you can't be sick, by his stripes you are healed. Because Jesus died on the cross and will be healed. Guess what happens? It goes. I have shared before about a time where I had pains in my shoulders. I, I couldn't believe what was going on. And then I go to this um, physiotherapy uh, place. And, and after doing a few sessions, this uh, doctor, young doctor who's, who's treating me, um, says, you know, you have to learn how to live with this thing. This thing never goes away. You live with it. I looked at her and said, what did you say? I, I didn't open my mouth. But I was thinking to myself, what did she say? I'm going to, I'm going to live like this? keep coming back here for half is your uh -uh. I said no way the next time you ever hear from me I will be well I'm not made for sickness I refused it because wait wait wait, wait. meant I had been praying about it it had been persistent it had stayed for weeks but I refused it and I did everything I could to get rid of it guess what friends I can put up my hands now there's no pain and it's been for two years no pain. You know why? I refused the suggestion. My mind is heaven bent towards supernatural health. Do I get symptoms that come to me and are suggesting things? Yes. But you know what my answer is? No. 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 
So in areas where that's my predisposition, I have victory. In areas where there is a debate, I kind of think I'm, you know, it's okay for me to be, you know, and, and, and one of those has been for me the area of living in abundance and I'm really working on my mind in that one. Like, I, enough has been okay for a while, but, but I have discovered, as Apostle Mose has taught us, as the word says, that God has created us for abundance because there's so much we need to do. We need to preach the gospel. We need to help so many people in life. And so I'm switching my mind to having much, to having abundance. I'm working on it. I'm almost there. When it clicks and it's about to click, hey, hey, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he, he teaches us things like don't allow your, your, your um, fuel tank to, to be at E, which in Luganda would be Ejude, but really it means empty, right? So, so keep a full tank, um, that Yakamita, keep it full and all that stuff. To the extent possible, just, just say no to poverty. So say no to limitations. Um, uh, Apostle has said before that it's like in your brains there is a certain way you are wired, the, the brain is wired, the way thinking works, okay? So if you allow some of those things that say no to you, you are blocking your thinking and you are not allowing yourself to think possibilities, which is actually to think faith. And the Bible says without faith it is impossible. No, it's not sometimes impossible. It's actually impossible to please God. Right? This conversation is going to go on. There's so much more I have to say about as he thinketh, as a man thinketh. Right? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a bit of a pause. Um, and this is going to be all there is going to be for this week. I would like to um, wrap this um, segment up and pray with you before you go away because I don't want this to be too long. But join me next week. And I'm going to be right here carrying on with this conversation because we've got to beat the mind into place to get us to think well. All right. Now, I don't I never allow myself to close a broadcast these days without giving an opportunity to anyone who has never had an opportunity to give their lives to Christ to do so. Right. Because you see, the many times where we live in so much oppression by the enemy because we aren't thinking straight. Why? Because we are living a life of guilt. Um, everything you've done wrong keeps on coming and hitting you and you feel so terrible about yourself. You feel like you're the dirtiest, filthiest, most unlovable person on the earth because of sin. And yet Jesus offers freedom to us because by his blood we are cleansed. The Bible says they defeated the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and did not love their life even to the death. You can receive Jesus now. You can become like me and so many others who are living victoriously, not just in our minds, but in every area of our lives because of how we think. Why? Because we are sure that we are saved. We are born again. All right? I'm going to ask that you say this prayer after me if you're saying yes to the life of victory, yes to the life of thinking victoriously like Jesus died for. And after you say this prayer, there's going to be a number right here on the screen, okay? So please call that number. There'll be a pastor on the other end of the line and they'll want to talk to you and encourage you and, and just show you the next steps in this decision you've made. So I would like you to just join me right now and let's pray. Just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. I thank you that your purpose for dying for me on the cross was to set me free, to set my mind free, to set my heart free, to cause me to live beyond the boundaries that men and women have set for me. I receive you today in my life and I ask that you take my life and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Look. If you've just prayed that prayer after me, you are born again. You are a son of God. It's legit. You can approach the throne of God with boldness, knowing that you'll get help in your time of need. I also never close without actually praying for people to be healed because God heals every, every single time I've prayed with people, God heals because Jesus said that we should heal the sick. All right, so... Let me pray for you. If, if you're watching me right now and you're feeling unwell, I'd like to pray for you. There's particularly a lady, um, you're watching me and 
and you have had um, oppression in your mind and in your heart because you are abused sexually by someone close to you and you feel terrible about yourself, first of all, God wants you to know it's not your fault and I'm going to pray for you and your soul is going to be set free. I want you to look up a lady called Joyce Myers. She's a preacher of the gospel. She's almost um, 80 now and she's been preaching Jesus and is a powerful lady who's saving so many lives of people all over the world. She was raped by her father, according to her count, over 200 times. And she was able to beat that. And she's living a life of victory and saving so many lives. Your story doesn't have to end because you're abused. So Father, I'm praying for that lady who's watching right now. Devil, I rebuke you. And I command you to let your filthy talons off her. In the name of Jesus, she's free. She's free. Holy Spirit, I pray that you free her mind, free her heart to live in the liberty that Jesus died for. And I pray, Lord, that if there's any who are sick, who are watching right now, any part of their bodies there, from the head, the, the top of their head, all the way to the sole of their feet, I pray that there'll be a cleansing. I pray that there'll be healing. I pray that there'll be restoration. I pray, Lord, that they will be made brand new, that parts that are dead will have life, that you will recreate, that there'll be creative miracles, that the lame will walk, that those that have pains in their bodies, that they will go, that organs will be mended or replaced. To the glory of your name, in the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone says, Amen. If you've been healed, and I know that God heals almost instantly, at least most of the time, really, right there and then. Um, if you've been healed, I'm going to encourage you. Please just, um, again, call this number that's on the screen right now. Let us know what God has done for you on this broadcast. Join me next week. Please like this and let your friends know about it. Subscribe and uh, click that notification button bell so that every time we're online, you can join us for this powerful teaching about keys to the kingdom. Ciao.